are the most common groups of paintings? A portrait. The subject of a portrait is a person. A landscape. The subject of a landscape is a piece of land. A still life. The subject of a still life is a set of objects such as flowers or fruit, and the plural of still life is still lives with an f, l i f e s. A history painting. The subject of a history painting is a scene from history, or from religious or mythical stories. A genre painting. A genre painting shows a scene from everyday life, such as a marketplace. An abstract. Abstracts do not represent the way something looks, but use shape and colour in interesting ways. So that's portraits, landscapes, still lifes, history paintings, genre paintings, and abstracts. When people talk about paintings, they don't always use the word painting. They sometimes use the word "work" as a count noun. It's a really remarkable work. Or they can use the word "piece." This portrait is one of Rembrandt's most famous pieces. Canvas is the material that an oil painting is on. If you look closely at the canvas, you'll see the artist's technique clearly. But canvas can also mean the whole oil painting. Of all the canvases he painted, this is his most ambitious. The way the things in a painting are arranged is known as the composition. The composition. The artist's knowledge of Dutch painting is evident in the composition. The front of the composition is known as the foreground, and the back, the background. We can see a small crucifix in the background. Often. Paintings contain stories. We usually call this the narrative of the painting. The narrative. We can say that a painting depicts its narrative. It shows it. This famous painting depicts a scene from Ovid's Metamorphosis. The subject is depicted in a fine coat leaning against a wall. Details in paintings give us a better idea about the subject. These details, we might say. Tell us things. The scissors in his hand tell us that the subject was a tailor. Other details represent ideas of themes. We call these details symbols, and we can say they symbolise their themes. The skull in the foreground symbolises death. What adjectives can we use to describe paintings? Well, of course, it's up to you what words you choose. But here are some ideas. If you're looking at a portrait and the subject is wearing their finest clothes, and there are lots of symbols of his or her job or position in society, you might say that it's formal. But if the subject is shown with their family, for example, if they look relaxed, you might judge it to be informal or natural. If the picture is of a private moment, such as a woman brushing her hair, for example, we might say it's an intimate portrait. Paintings with lots of exciting action can be called dramatic. A dramatic picture. It's such a powerful, exciting composition. The whole thing is so dramatic. If you find a picture to be very beautiful, you might use the word lyrical. If you're not sure what message a picture is trying to tell you, you might say that it's ambiguous. Ambiguous. And if the subject of a painting looks very real, we can call it lifelike. The fruit in that still life are so lifelike. I feel like I can eat them. So that's formal, informal, natural, intimate, dramatic, lyrical, ambiguous, and lifelike.